Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in for another video. So in this video I'm going to be talking about an upcoming upgrade to the filtration system of the 1000 gallon Mori Mega Tank. And I'm going to be breaking this up into two videos. Uh, so in this video I'm only going to be talking to you about uh, what the problem is with the current filtration system and uh, the changes that I want to implement to address those problems. And then in the next video or one video after that I will be just going through uh, the upgrades and then hopefully at the end we will have a filtration system that is suitable to handle the waste of the moris when they become adults. Uh, the giant mori will grow to 10 feet, Tesla tamori between 8 to 10 feet and the viper mori also 8 feet so they are huge eels when they are adults so I want to make sure that the filtration system is prepped when they reach that size. Okay guys, so like I just mentioned in the intro, I'm going to have to redo um, part of this filtration system. And uh, this is actually going to be a lot of work. Uh, so much work actually that I'm going to have to break this into two videos. So in the this first video, I'm just going to explain exactly uh, what the problem is, uh, what I can do to fix it. And then in the next video, I'm actually just going to go through with it. Um, otherwise, I'm going to have like a, you know, 45 minute video and I don't really want to do that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let me just uh, talk to you exactly what the problem is. So the problem with this tank, uh, and this is similar to any other tank that has large piles of rock, uh, is that there's simply not enough flow on the bottom. So the uh, moray eels, you know, they actually obviously uh, snake around this tank and uh, on the rock work and uh, they obviously steer, steer up some of the, you know, gunk. But uh, initially I thought that these uh, gobies here and all these little uh, horseshoe crabs that I have here, uh, that they will eventually be able to, uh, you know, steer, steer up the sand bed, uh, you know, enough for it to be turned over but unfortunately they're not able to keep up with that. And uh, so the problem with that is obviously moray eels, they produce a lot of waste and so do any other living animals in this tank. And uh, the waste that we are concerned about is the ammonia and the nitrite. And uh, if you know anything about uh, ammonia and nitrite, you know uh, that this is actually, uh, these are actually heavy gases. So what that means is they settle on the bottom and that's where they accumulate. And uh, you know, what else lives on the bottom? Uh, the moray eels. So the moray eels are more exposed to the uh, ammonia and nitrite that builds up at the bottom, um, at, you know, compared to like the monofish, which are always, you know, on the upper part of the uh, tank. So that's why I have to come up with ways, you know, how do I get some flow, you know, deep into this, uh, you know, rock work. So uh, I don't have to worry about the top because, you know, I have water flowing from this side and I also have water f flow from the other side. And uh, one thing that you can actually do, which I discovered, is that usually these, uh, uh, these types of filtrations that come with just regular, you know, um, flow nozzles, I don't know what, what to call them exactly, but what I did was I replaced all of them with these uh, high flow nozzles. And this is basically uh, what one looks like. So the way these work is that the water flow, uh, will, the water will flow through this as usual, but it will also suck water from the sides and actually amplify uh, the flow. So you do not need to necessarily buy a new pump, a more powerful pump, and have to deal with, you know, higher electricity costs. You can simply increase dramatically the flow of the tank by simply swapping out any of your regular nozzles with these. And this actually works pretty well. I mean, this one is pointed up, and you can see that they move slowly left to right. Um, and this other one I have pointing down. So this one provides some flow at the bottom, but unfortunately it's not enough to really go deep, you know, inside the rock work. And if you can see maybe at the very back, you know, there's all this crud, you know, all this gang accumulating that uh, simply doesn't make its way up into the filter, into the overflow box. So 
yeah, what can I do to address that? So when I purchased this tank, um, it, I noticed that it had four holes drilled on the bottom. There's one, there's two, there's three, and there's a fourth one. And you can see them much better on the bottom. It's uh, one there, one there, one there, and another one back there. And when I set up this tank, um, I was so scared about, uh, you know, leaks from these bottom drains that I just kept them off completely and uh, just tried to do, uh, address the water flow uh, issue using, you know, other methods. But unfortunately, uh, like I just said, um, it's not really working very well or not, not well enough. So what I have to do is um, I'm going to install something called a closed loop system. And what this does is you basically have a pump like this, a very powerful pump. This is a one horsepower pump sitting underneath the tank. And then you have water drain from these two down into the pump. And then the pump will basically pump the water back out through these other drains on the uh, opposite ends. So basically water drains into the pump and gets circulated right back onto the tank. So there's no uh, filtration going on, it's just pure circulation. And um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be installing you know, some, some more of these nozzles that I showed you and just you know, direct the flow in multiple directions. But basically I'm going to be able to create a lot of flow inside of this rock work and that will definitely help to stir up all the gunk. And uh, what I'm also going to be doing is, um, I'm going to actually remove all of the sand. And I already started doing that, you know, uh, over the last couple of water changes, that you was, that's why you see you know, all this bare area here. So basically, yeah, I've been removing this sand every other week when I do my water changes. And that is also the reason why you have so much algae now, because this sand, you know, provides a lot of biological filtration. And if you remove this, you actually, you know, you lose it. So I'm going to have to replace it with something else. But uh, first I'm going to tell you, you know, what, what do I put here instead? Because obviously I don't like this look of, you know, being able to see the wood that's underneath the, the tank. So the company that uh, makes these 3D backgrounds, um, here's a better look at it. They also make something called uh, something that they just call flat sheets, which just lay flat on the bottom of a tank. And I purchased an entire roll of this. So this is a 10 foot roll, four feet uh, wide, and it's very thin, but, uh, and it's, you know, similar in color. It's not too rough. So it's, it, the eels won't, you know, scratch themselves. And basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to just lay this on the, on the bottom from end to end. And uh, that will provide some additional space for the biological bacteria to uh, grow. And uh, yeah, so what does it mean? Obviously it means everything you see in this tank has to come out because I have to drain the water, I have to remove all the rocks, I have to uh, replace the bulkheads that are on the bottom because I basically glued them shut and I have to redo it with, uh, redo this filtration upgrade with uh, new ones. So everything has to come out, the giant moray, the tessellata moray, the viper moray, all the fish. Everyone has to go into uh, temporary holding tanks. And uh, once that is done, uh, I will, you know, lay this on the bottom, glue it, and uh, cut holes for the bulkhead openings. Then I'm going to install the new bulkhead. Um, I'm going to install all the piping uh, that will go, you know, into this pump and out of this pump. And uh, the pump will actually sit somewhere down here and that means that this, uh, you know, runway style of filtration will have to actually move back uh, two rows. So I'm not sure if I'm going to repurpose these um, or if I'm just going to use some acrylic tanks that I purchased pretty cheaply, uh, kind of like this one. So I'm thinking about, uh, you know, having just a row of these on the back of this tank. But um, because this was so much sand that's that's in this tank so i'm talking about you know 240 pounds of sand that is a lot of biological filtration that i'm going to be losing and uh, these eels obviously going to continue to grow uh, producing more waste um, people don't under uh, people don't really 
uh, know how much waste these eels produce. And it's not just, uh, you know, the poop, it's actually the urine. They pee a lot. And, you know, urine is almost pure ammonia. So you need to have this ammonia be converted into nitrite and nitrate as quickly as possible. So let me show you uh, what I'm going to be doing to replace the biological filtration that this sand uh, has been providing so far. All right, we are now in my garage and here I have my little corgis so that they don't bark when I'm in the middle of filming. But basically this filter here is uh, what's going to take care of the biological filtration that I'm missing when I remove the sand. So this is the Ultima 2 from Aqua uh, ultraviolet and this is rated for 6,000 gallons and um, I talked to the company who makes these and they basically say when you use these uh, for salt water you basically have to cut your expected filtration in half so this is still going to be rated for 3,000 gallons and uh, what you have inside which you don't see right now but I'm going to put a picture up is you have little plastic beads and uh, what happens when you install this filtration is water goes in here the beads will you know churn over and then the water flows back out into the tank and uh, these beads these plastic beads uh, they provide the surface area for the uh, beneficial bacteria to grow and the great thing about these bead filters and the fact that it constantly uh, turns over the beads is that any bacteria that is old and weak because they do have a lifespan just uh, just like you know people uh, they will fall to the bottom they will get washed out and only the strong bacteria keeps living on these beads so uh, when it's all said and done and this is installed this will actually provide a lot better filtration than just having sand laying static on the bottom of a tank that can you know accumulate a bunch of waste and uh, nitrogen is pocket so uh, yeah this is going to help a lot when it's installed all right, so that is basically, uh, you know, the plan that I have in mind. Uh, I assume that this will take at least a week. So I will probably have to take off from work uh, just to dedicate, you know, all my time to this project. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a, a monstrous project. So, but I'm excited because, you know, long term, the eels are going to be uh, even happier than they are now. I mean, they have been pretty happy uh, as it is, but um, the fact that, uh, you know, there's so much gunk accumulating in this sand bed is just, uh, it's just not good. Like every time I remove some sand, it, you know, the whole house just smells like rotten egg because there's just so much gunk accumulating in there. And it's just not good because, like I said, eels, you know, they live at the bottom. So they're constantly exposed to the ammonia nitrite that settles on the bottom. And, uh, you know, that's just not good. The giant mori, he likes to be up, you know, in the upper parts, but... Uh, the Viper Mori and the Tessalata Mori, they mostly stay in the rock work. And, uh, you know, I have a bunch of invertebrates, you know, my little horseshoe crabs, you know, here's one. Uh, they are constantly exposed to that. You know, the, the gobies are constantly exposed to that. So um, this has to be addressed. And uh, I don't want to wait, you know, too long. But, uh, yeah, so like I said, very big project. Um, hope you understand why I need to do it. And uh, once it's all done, uh, like I said, we have, you know, a bunch of uh, flow in the water and the, the bottom of this tank and inside the rock works. The pump will basically pump it up into the overflow box. It will then go through its normal filtration. So we have chemical filtration with these, uh, you know, filter media. We have the protein skimmer. We have some chemical filtration. I purchased a uh, reactor just for a carbon uh, filter. And then it will, you know, go through its different rows. And then eventually, um, so this will probably be up in the corner uh, to make space for this big bead filter, which will sit here. So the bead filter will, you know, provide the uh, additional biological filtration. And then it will pump it up in here. And then, yeah, it's going to be a lot, you know, a lot, I guess, less work to do water changes because my nitrates should be uh, staying much lower for much longer. And when I um, built this pipe system, you know, underneath that will feed this pump, I will actually install a drain for water changes because um, when I do water changes, I have to actually pump out this water using utility pumps, which takes a long time, you know, cost a lot of electricity. But if I can 
repurpose one of these drains uh, just for draining the water for a water change. I can just do it through gravity and it, it's going to be a lot faster. So I still have to pump the water back in with utility pumps, but um, at least getting the water out of this tank would take, I don't know, less than a minute. So because it's, like I said, when you open up the bottom, it just goes really fast. So yeah, so I'm excited for, you know, having less maintenance work that way and uh, being able to do my water changes a lot quicker. And uh, yeah, so thank you again. I hope uh, this is something that excites you as much as me. <laughs> I know the eels will be very happy. Uh, let me see if I can find the viper more. Unfortunately, he's very, you know, very shy still and still hiding and never swims around. At least you see the tessellata. And uh, yeah, and this, this problem with the algae will go away as well once this is all done, uh, especially when I take out everything and keep it in the 55 gallon brew trash cans for like a week uh, with lids on so there's no uh, sun. Um, so, and no, so no UV light, which means basically all these, uh, this algae will die off anyway while I'm doing all this work. And you can see here, I have been experiencing with some wood and that is because, um, at night I noticed that these monofish, when they try to sleep, they all just hover, you know, in this area on the bottom, uh, on the left, but, uh, you know, the eels are nocturnal, of course, so they swim around and they constantly, you know, uh, chase them, uh, unintentionally. So simply by putting pieces of wood in there, um, I'm able to create some additional, I guess, cover for the fish. And I have two more pieces that are still in my pond that I'm waiting for them to uh, fully soak and, uh, you know, go to the bottom of the, of the uh, pond. And then, uh, yeah, uh, one problem that you have with wood, of course, is that um, it lowers the pH. It makes the water more acidic. So you have to put in some crushed coral into your filtration and then some uh, buffering um, solution that you have to buffer uh, or provide to the tank via these uh, dosing pumps and uh, to keep it all stable. And obviously sometimes it turns the water, you know, brown or, you know, gives it a certain tint and you can remove that through this uh, carbon filtration here. So at the end, you know, it looks a little weird, I guess, but there are, you know, areas in the world where it would, you know, grows near saltwater, like the mangroves, for example. So it's not, you know, totally unheard of to have uh, driftwood in a saltwater tank. And uh, the invertebrates will also like it, especially my uh, spiny lobsters, because they can just climb up, you know, and uh, use this kind of as a playground, so. Um, yeah, so this is it. Uh, the next video will just me uh, actually just starting on this project. I'm not gonna explain again what, I, um, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and how I'm doing it. So um, if you are interested in that, um, <laughs> stay tuned. I'm not sure exactly when I will be posting the, the follow-up, but uh, maybe a month or two. But uh, yeah, thank you again for watching this video. I hope uh, you are excited as, as me, and I uh, hope I see you in the next one.